All right, everybody. We should be good with everything here. Adams is in the house. Adams. 869. What's up, man? What's up? I'm getting ready here. I I'll, I'll be with you in a second. So Frederick Barut is in the house. Good evening, Aunt Marius and Chad. Good evening, Frederick. Crazy Challengers. Hello, Fine Conjurers. Hello, Fine Conjuro. How is it going, Crazy? It's going well. It is going well. What's up, guys? I'm glad you're tuning in. And TVET is in the house. All right, here we go. And yes, we go here. I'll be with you guys in a second. Just give me one more second here. Alrighty, righty, 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 righty. Odd Mario's magic. Like and subscribe. All right, guys. I just... <laughs> I just almost skipped the intro again. Yeah, I'm tuning my music a little uh, 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 s slower. Uh, not slower. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm listening to slower music than you guys do right now. No, no, uh, not as loud. Turning it down. That's what I wanted to say. So we got you, some other guys tuning in. Uh, we got M uh, Momento Magic. Come, Leo Dini uh, says hello, hello to everyone. Hello, Momentos. Uh, we got Bad Manner uh, 190676 uh, says hello from Austria. Hello, how are you doing? Welcome. Naira Smith is also in the house. Hey, buddy. What's up? Guys, that's great. Currently eight folks watching. I'm excited. Um, we, are, we are still in the last chapter before the last chapter of the Royal Road to Card Magic. We are, we are taking it slow here, guys. Again, we will look... And we will recap some really fine card tricks. Working or analyzing or studying here a routine. Thumbnail rules the roll licking routine. The roll with the card magic. And if you guys are working with the book, you will find it on page 241. Right under the good luck card trick. We are looking at three tricks here, a rapid transition, the piano trick, leapfrog, sorry, at four tricks, and at a vested interest. And so there's a lot of stuff coming at us. We got a routine where we're going to have uh, have to use the, the double lift, respectively double turnover, like three times basically in a row. That is one time too much in uh, in my opinion. So I, I wanna uh, give this a try to improve this, uh, maybe a little bit using um, uh, top change. I'm gonna show you this in a second. And then uh, we're going to this uh, very, very funky trick. Um, I, I love to recap you once again, the piano trick, which is something really good to have at your fingertips. I mean, this is something, this is really as easy as it gets, but if you play this well, this is something you can really add in everywhere and you will have great reactions with it. Um, you will have um, your audience been um, um, enjoying this very much and sometimes even you might get busted because uh, not everybody is dumped down yet. <laughs> and the piano trick, that's a little, that's what you say, that's a little scam. Um, we are going to show, we're going to talk about this. And then we've got um, the leapfrog. Where the leapfrog is basically a card production, um, uh, um, how, a revelation, uh, a kind of a stunt. Um, and uh, we're going to take a close look at this. Um, this is one of those things. Um, nice to know. And there are so many other options. Um, performing a quick a revelation of a card, right? Um, like the pop-out card stuff. Um, and then this uh, routine closes with a vested interest. Uh, so we have to palm a card and then we have to um, uh, uh, sneak the card in under uh, our west or something. Um, there are also many different options of doing this. I usually also like to play this very fast when I do it. Palming a card and then placing it usually in my uh, back uh, pocket of my pants. Um, 
and I played this very fast. You know, like, like the card couldn't be there actually. It's in my it's my because I took it out at the beginning of the trick. It's a roll licking routine, they say. So this is something something witty, something we play a little faster, something where it's it's a little more snappy, a uh, little closer to what is very pa uh, uh, um, famous these day in card magic. Uh, so a kind of strong effects um, in a in a in very dense uh, short period of time. They're just giving this in here. Um, in this whole chapter of routine in card tricks, who got um, and it's a little bit of you know not falling out of the whole performance style. Who got are featuring in the book The Royal Road to Card Magic. It's just a little bit um, playing with the pace, with the speed of of the routines, because you can play uh, routines or perform magic really in uh, really in, in different manners and in, in, in different uh, paces. Um, there's uh, much, especially when you're at the table with a, a little bit bigger group, if you want to um, ch chat a little more, if you want to um, lay more emphasis on the story, on the narrative, um, also to buy yourself some time maybe, <laughs> you know, to make a three or four um, tricks um, worth the time, expand it a little bit. Um, that's uh, much slower than something like this, where you're... Um, maybe at a bar and you have a card transposition you have a card you know ap uh, 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 appear in a way disappear and it goes really rapid uh roll licking a little bold there and uh and and and, uh, and whatever no matter where we end up what we end up performing which tricks we end up using um in the end for ourselves uh, from the road to card magic all these tricks here who got in Bruy did um choose to build tiny routines with our word, uh, recapping, going back to looking back at them again and maybe adding them to our repertoire. So, um, um, uh, so we got um, um, Naira Smith and uh, Bad Manor, both from Austria, from Vienna, and from Amstetten. Uh, 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 this is great, guys. So you're relatively close to each other. I've got folks watching sometimes from all over the globe. I don't know, um, quite a percentage of my views come, comes actually from the United States of America, but there's also pe uh, uh, people tuning in um, from the rest of the world. And I'm really excited about that aspect of this technology, being enabled to just, you know, broadcast some um, card magic lectures, some some um, meeting with the community, meet up with the community, uh, live from my living room here and then you know getting connected with you guys um, all over the globe that that's exciting so we got hey you, hey hey you shrine clown is in the house hey you shrine awesome you're tuning back in again here welcome today from Boston message uh, um, MA USA so and momentos magicos Leodini from Angola man that's that's amazing i love it that's awesome <laughs> yeah that's crazy by the way i'm broadcasting from the capital of germany berlin in always at eight we got now eight um eight at point eight p.m uh, uh, gmt plus one it is now changed to winter time again you know we, we in germany we have this weird thing with changing the time <laughs> So it's getting super dark very early and also temperature has been dropping down lately. So today it's a cooler day. I, I've actually wearing this uh, thing. How you say this in English? Let me, let me. Yeah, it's a sweater with a sweater, right? Pimping all over the world. That's right. Pimping all over the world. So, um, Adams uh, is probably um, uh, b uh, working on an another airplane. That's also great. And I'm doing this again. I wanted to go back here um, on the car table. Let's get started with the first trick, guys. Don't uh, let's don't waste time. Just that you know, every links or everything you need is linked in the info box as well as in the info cards where you will find a link to the whole 
series. We have been doing this all year, every Tuesday, chapter by chapter, Royal Road to Cap Magic. Learning a lot. It's awesome. It's a privilege doing this together with you guys. So let's 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 go get into this trick now this is a nice one this is an impromptu thing this is really worth um studying so um you have a spectator shuffle the cards just like that and then we take a look at the top card and nobody can know what the top card is right because the top card has been uh completely selected since it has been shuffled by the spectator so we got the nine of spades here nine of spades which uh, i put on my side right um that's the magician's card now i have the spectator this is how i play it usually now select a card and it stops me anywhere with an overhand shuffle i shuffle the rest of the cards in there and then again we're going to take a look at the top card and this time it is going to be let me see it is going to be the joker it's really nice it's a nice uh, nice uh, happy accident i love the bicycle joker look at this guys very classical joker anyways now this joker goes to the spectator's side right and now here's really the funky thing about this i now can change the cards just by waving um over them here with this card waving over this card and i can change this card right into this card and all, uh, the other way around this card into this card right so of course i need to say the magical word so i say abracadabra and sim salapim that's what we what we say in germany as magicians <laughs> or maybe worldwide i don't know and now i have the joker in my hand beautiful joker and um let me see what the spectator got on their side and that is of course the nine of spades the selected card oh oh card transposition card transposition isn't that a nice trick guys by the way i don't have any advertisement um uh, contracts or something. I just want to give you um, a little um, tip, nonetheless. Um, if you, because we are here in routining right now, card tricks and road card magic. This is one of the best things I ever purchased in Magic. That's called Card on a Glass by Doc Eason. And um, this is a um, whole routine um, um, circling around the theme of a uh, of two or one selection always um, ending up under a glass on the table and um, this is a beautiful example how to routine how to connect different tricks this is what we are studying here right now um, uh, together so wait oh man i'm just i'm so sorry guys I'm, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here right now because i am P pushing the wrong buttons i wanted to do something else i wanted to shift here um piecing uh piecing tricks together and this very very powerful very 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 clever very 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 workable uh master routine by dog eason card on the class um featuring uh some of the uh, most famous classics in card magic and really putting them very cleverly together um, starts with a cut uh, trans uh, transposition transformation um, two spectators uh, select cards and then the cards of the spectators change that's how it gets started so we get started here in this routine with this l little feat and you should never underestimate this effect it is very powerful of course here we are relatively at the beginning you know we are at the end of the beginning in the royal road to card magic so we play this very fast forward and it is called a rolling routine so this is something bang 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 you just do that and before they know it, you just proceed right but still let's stay here a little while the the doesn't really matter i like it it's impromptu of course you can do this with force cards and then you have more control over presenting the effect of course we start with a double lift and i'm i'm a dick i i didn't <laughs> i didn't um i didn't I didn't link my tutorial series on the double lift in the info cards right now. So um, you guys got to go to my channel page now if you want to uh, see it. Here we are. 
Currently 16 folks watching, everybody tuning in. We are um, studying here um, beautiful tricks right now from the Royal Road to Card Magic and um, uh, analyzing why who got Embrouet, the authors of the Royal Road to Card Magic, uh, did choose these tricks and also in which uh, in the order they did uh, they, they present them. So we are um, trying to um, to to wrap our heads about um, the the real secrets about magic, getting getting a real performance down. Um, so I wanted to show you this here. Um, my, 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 my page, my, my website, um, my YouTube site, you know, and if you roll down here, you will find uh, more card magic tutorial series. And right here um, should be, uh, should, uh, there should be um, um, a double lift, double turn over tutorial series. If you click a more, right? And this tutorial series, let me click on this one right now. Now this plays the intro. But um, I want to just so where where we got here we got um, we got we on Penn and Teller. We show the top card how does now I space. hear this Take video case. turn it off okay um, so we got here um, double lift double turn over the series pilot I'm just going giving an introduction on everything you need to know. Um, uh, then we have the best beginner double lift, double turn over, best working double lift, double turn over, in my opinion, the strike double lift, double turn over, a fancy double lift, double turn over, a little flourish, a convincer flourish, a snap flourish, something you can do with the double, this little uh, move here. And uh, then um, the latest uh, fast paced tutorial I did, how to boost your double lift performance, um, a little add on for the best beginner double lift these are the four double lifts i would uh, recommend um, for everybody getting at their hands and fingertips and this is just this is everything you need to know about double lifts double turnovers everything else is uh, uh, bananas it's crazy of course you can do that um, but th th these, these are the working solutions right um, find it on my channel page um, all tutorials of course free you're very welcome so uh, back to the card table here back to the card table so the top card we have um, here the ace um, the, uh, the the most valuable card in the deck and we bring it back to our side right and since we had a double we now have uh, the ace on top of the deck right so we and we have an indifferent card now li lying on our side doesn't matter which one it is now in the royal road to card magic this is how they perform it they just would now say since the deck has been shuffled by a spectator we just lift up and not the, the next top card and th this would be the eight of spades right now the eight of spades goes to the spectator now we're dealing the spectator of course the 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 ace which is on top of the deck however the spectator thinks this lies on my end now what we do um as we proceed with the trick as as we explain what's going on we say something like like this deck is a little bit witty or a little bit magical tonight let's see how good it does because when i give it a little shake and by the way i already got a um, pinky break for the double right just wanted to know you this and then you will see i now have the eight of spades which we just placed here on there and then the spectators they will turn their card over right now i am in this situation i'm having a, a double here i can say you know what let's leave the the, the the eight right there in the deck and with maybe an a card control i can um let's say uh, let's let's try this one we just um do a little bit of that i can now maybe maybe i can do something crazy i can see let's see how magical uh this deck is see the eight it just comes uh jumping back to the top and of course we can change the eight into an ace anytime because the ace that is the ambitious card we place it right here in the center of the deck we just snap once with our fingers and it comes jumping back to the top right something like that um and it is what you are able to do with those different double lift let's go back to the to the routine um let's say we, we stay with the ace here so we have it second from uh, the top and um spectators don't know what's happening they just shuffle the cards and you you say you say to the spectator as you um 
I'm addressing right now, you're, you're beginners, you know, you, say, you, you take the cards and as you say to the spectator, now let's take a look at the top card, you take, you catch your pinky break, that's all you take, catch your pinky break, and then you might show the top card just like that, and you already can perform this trick, right, without uh, worries. Just like that, place the, the ace on your side, and now you have to perform another double lift. And you say, let's, now let's, let's take a look at the second of a card, and then you just do that, and you say, now we have the king of hearts here, and the king of hearts, that goes to, to the spectator, to you. Now, when you take your card and you say, and you couldn't can maybe say, so when I do a magical gesture like this, I wave over the cards. You can catch here a pinky break underneath the top card. You place the card back on top, where you s explain what's happening, that the magic is happening. Now the card should jump and switch. Let's see. And there you go. The king jumped to the top of the deck, and the ace jumped onto the table. So I just performed this with the beginner double lift, which I call it's the best solution as a beginner. Um, you can already perform this powerful card transposition, card change, without freaking out too much. Now, of course, you can, because this is a rolling routine, you can um, push your luck here a little bit, and you can. Um, do it in a little different manner. So, I um, I ha I show the I show the um, I show the the top card. Right, we have the top card. That is the spectator. That is the magician's card. We place it on our side. Now we show the the um. This yet now I have the I have to, I shuffle the cards. I say to the spectator, you stop me anytime, and I'm using this um, lift uh, force. Another top card, I show it to the spectator, I place it on top. And now, I don't do a double lift or something, what I do now is a top change. And I was trying to work this out a little bit here, um, for this camera situation. I know this is working perfectly if I do this live, but for this camera situation, now, of course, there is no offbeat. And it's it's just on beat. You you guys looking at my hands all the time. So I was coming up with this little um, a little bit of misdirection. Just going like, look, if I wave with the cards over my hands, th that's how I would play it. So if I wave with the cards over my hands, I can change this card into this one, or respectively the other one. And then I, of course I've already have the card switched. Now I've got the king of hearts which has been just put on the table and the spectator got the ace of diamonds. So this is basically now the top change here in action. So wave, come back, point, come forward, confusion, show effect, respectively. I wave with the card, hands are here, I wave with the card, and if I do this live, I say, just if I wave with the card, now my body attention goes up as I pull my hands in for, for, for one motion. In the same motion, I turn my wrist around to point to the top. Just how to how I would use the top, top change in this th situation. So I go like, I'm down with my attention here. I'm down with my attention here. I already have got my card pushed forward a little bit. My attention here. So I could change the card simply by waving this card into this card. More time. Just by waving, just by waving, I could change this card into this card. So it's this motion. Now, and if if you do it many times in a row, of course, now your eyes are following, and you will see it more and more. But if you if you get it into a smooth motion, and you perform it, maybe at the beginning, uh, this will work. Now this just deceived myself. So like this, I'm here. I'm cut. Ah, got the book here. I'm here. Bringing the hands in, turning around. See that? Coming here. Bringing the hands in. Pointing here. Coming forward. This action. Practice makes beginners. Waving. I didn't like that one because the, 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 the change, the, now I put the hands together here. What I need to do is when I come 
just together and then I point. And the the reason why I come back together here is because I'm saying I. I would say I. I would say, look, by waving with the I'm in this position. By waving with the hands, by waving with this card over the other card, I can change this one into this one. I respectively this one into this one. I can I can check it to switch them. Actually, I already did. Look. Now that you're getting away with this, or respectfully this blows the spectator's minds, because come back to the mindset of the spectator. We have a card, the top card, from a deck that the spectator just shuffled, the King of Hearts, which I take as a magician. Now, we have the cards shuffled again. Spectator stops us anytime. Now we take a look at this card, and this card is the Tree of Spades, right? Now I take this card and I place it to the spectator. Now I take the card, the King of um, King of Hearts, right? The King of Hearts, and when I wave with the King of Hearts over the Three of Spades, just like that, I can change this card into this card. Don't believe me? Of course, I need to say the magic words, Abracadabra, and look. Now I've got the Three of Spades, and the spectator got the the King of Hearts. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Love this so much. It's also a great opportunity to practice the top change. What do you say, guys? Do you like this? Did you ever uh, perform a top change like this? Uh, roll licking? <laughs> so, um, Crazy Channel is right. Yeah, Doc Eason is amazing. The DVD is packed with great material. It is. It was one of the best purchases I ever did. It's it's powerful. Card Magic 99 is now. Scott Magic, welcome to the show. Wow, was well, superb, everybody. How everybody would they don't going? I'm I'm having kind of a I'm, I'm super exhausted. My workload has been over the top the last couple of weeks. Uh, due uh, due to uh, due. Uh, because I had to compensate uh, um, um, uh, my, my partner's um, uh, cold, so I was working double shifts. <laughs> and now the Christmas season is, Christmas season is coming fast at us, and, um, and I'm just kind of already exhausted. So I've been, I've been, I'm having a really kind of slow week. I'm doing things, I'm working, I'm doing the live streams as you can see, but I kind of feel like really laid back at the moment. So, uh, um, yeah, hey, you, Rishindara, how is Hank Lee doing? Okay, guys, you know each other. Danny541 Fuentes is now. Danny, welcome to the show. I believe you're tuning in for the first time. My name is Marius, and I'm, I'm just, I, I've just been talking about the top change, trying to improve a little bit here. The first uh, trick of the rolling routine on page 241 of the Royal Road to Card Magic. Guess, let's get back to the card table. Um, let's do this stupid thing. Let's go to the, to, to the, to the. <laughs> Crazy challenges right in comment right now. It's quite a nice scenario for a top change. I have never performed that same top change move, but top change during off beats is fantastic. Um, yes, um, and you have to create this to uh, this offbeat, and really you you need to understand this. You know, uh, it, there is these two layers of uh, of um, of de uh, deception in the in this situation. So um, you're welcome, Danny and uh, Marian Tanaj. Uh, tunes in from Romania, man. Hello, welcome to the show. I'm just explaining here a little bit of card magic in the from the book, The Royal Road to Card Magic. Yeah, d d so I just just let just recap this one more time. So the spectator just has seen um, the ace going to me. And then he sees another card, the three of spades going on his side. And now I explain that I can do this with the waving thing. So it's established here, the cards are here with the waving thing. And when I when I come back and I lift up my attention, I bring my cards back and I come forward like this. Best with the with the with the um, wrist kill. So here waving, coming oh god, waving, coming back like this, 
And if you are standing, if you're working this on a bigger crowd, um, not with just the table and my elbows, you know, it feels really uncomfortable. But I can really like, if, I, if I'm standing and I'm working with people, and I'd be like, like, look, I've been waving this. I can, I can, I can ch change to the right, to the left. I have even a lot of time to have the hands together, pointing down. And because now you don't see my head, because my head would be, my, my, my head would be up with the people and people would follow this whole motion. So I have a, a huge window of opportunity. And even, even though I wouldn't even stress out, wouldn't need to stress out to do this super fast and quick. I can just, I can, I can even make this work in this terrible uh, scenario where I don't actually have an offbeat. If I give this a little bit of practice, you know, she go like bang, bang. Can you can if you make you just I just need would need to really get like like a slide you know it's a top change for a specific camera angle camera angle and then if if you get a whole body motion smooth this would work this works this is the crazy thing about a top change as long as your general body m movement is still reasonable and not completely out of order. And too fast paced or too stressed or, or um, um, interrupted. Some top changes here. So like this, so like this. Don't see it. Push forward, push forward very slowly. Bring together. Don't lift too much. Like this, there can can do this in a very tiny motion. Very nice, very nice. Just an impression here, the top change. Now the piano trick. I brought this here forward. We've got now these should we have we have a spectator here holding the hands like playing the piano. But dee 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 dee, right? All right. And I play, so now uh, Jerome Fournier, Fournier asked what keyboard is that? Sorry, if, uh, off topic. Um, I forgot what it is. It is, um, it is, I wanted to have one of those. It's a uh, Velo Fire, Velocifier, mechanical keyboard for Mac. I, I just bought it, I wanted to have it. I, I don't know. It was, a t I came across those mechanic, there was a, there was a trend about mechanical keyboards and I was uh, pathetic enough to just, you know, go with the flow. I found one for the Mac because I need, I, I'm a Mac user and it makes this blinky blinky. I love it very much. Blinky blinky. Veil of fire. Anyways, back to card magic. Like piano playing. And then you would stick pairs of twos. It's an even two is an even number, right? Place it in here. Bang. Another pair of two. It is even, right? Another pair of two. It's even, right? Another pair of two in the hands. And you have uh, one card in the hand. That is the, that is uneven, right? And then you... Is that right? So. So that's what you did. This is what you would, would, would be in one hand. And then you have another hand. And you go there. And you put all these pairs even pairs in there right okay and then you have to, you create this beautiful image of these cards sticking in the fingers and here's how this goes down you take a you take a pair of twos it's even right you take a pair of twos it's even isn't that right you take a pair of tooth it's even a pair of tooth even a pair of tooth even, a pair of tooth even, a pair of tooth even, right? And now we have one card that's uneven and it will decide these two pairs of even cards, which is uneven. Am I right? And I place it wherever you want it. And then you decide for this part. Now this is uneven and this is even, right? Now watch my sleight of hand skills. And if you see it, you need to, to, to shout out. I saw it. Look at it. Ah, that's how I do it. 
because now we got the uneven pile with two cards even two cards even two cards even and two cards even and we got the even pile with two cards even two cards even two cards even and one card uneven <laughs> Did you fall for that? Did you fall for that? <laughs> Tell me if this fools you. So, we have... Hey, you shrine the clown. And Danny four five one Fuentes talking about um, a guy called Lee who did run a magic shop, which is closed now. So magic shops are closing now, probably only going online. I've heard about it. When I last entered a magic shop in Barcelona, the guy running the shop, he talked a little bit, a little bit about how, his, how business is going. And he said, basically, they're making all their, their business online. And they just keep the shop kind of <laughs> for nostalgic reasons. So did you fall for the piano trick? Did you fall for the piano trick? It's such a stupid, so stupid trick. I won't even, I won't even... <laughs> If you fall for it, I just won't, I won't show you here. It's so stupid. You will find it on page, uh, I did, where, where is it? The piano trick in the Royal Road to Card Magic. You will find it in the Royal Road to Card Magic. The piano trick. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure if I would, if I wanted to put this trick in between the leapfrog and the rapid transition here in the row licking routine because um, um, for my taste the piano tricks takes a little bit um, the, the speed out of the routine so I would maybe even start with it and then increase speed or I would um, put it somewhere else I don't know. I don't know. So let's go to the to the le to the leapfrog. Um, the the cards are certainly in a high spirits tonight. Let's see what else they have to offer here. Will you take a card and you too? So we are doing the leapfrog now with two cards. Uh. And maybe, maybe um, you can use the two cards already um, in play with the with the rapid transition. You don't even need to use it for two cards. The way is they're using the leapfrog trick here in order to um, in order to um, get ready for the the card called a vested interest where we palm a card and then it appears in the vest or somewhere else so let's do it with two cards and let's see how we can control the card because we need one card at the bottom of the deck and one card at the top of the deck so we have a spectator select a card and we have another spectator select a card these are random cards here so let me let me work with uh Two cards I don't forget. So the King of King of Diamonds is good. Let's work with the King of Diamonds and the King of Spades for the sake of the of the presentation. So um, one at the top and one uh, uh, of the bottom. Uh, how how would we do this? How would we do this? How would we do this? Um, let's say we do this with the overhand shuffle, saying, "Look, I'm shuffling the cards, and you place your card anywhere." where you want so the king of spades goes in the cards and the cards get shuffled right and then we shuffle uh, the cards with the overhand shuffle we shuffle them we have the uh, king of diamonds going in there this is maybe how i would do this um 
and then I shuffle them and I cut him like this and I got the king of um, spades at the bottom and the king of diamonds on top of the deck as a preparation now once again I'm a guy I'm really 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 believing in the necessity of building a solid foundation and all the shuffling techniques from the first two chapters the overhand shuffle and the Hindu shuffle are the absolute key to anything so let me show you this once again what I did here now um, of course I shuffle to a random position where the spectator stops me spectator puts the card in in I come I lift the top card with me got a break here and I shuffle it to the top now I got it to the at the top of the deck right now I want to get my second card, uh, uh, lose my second card now I can use the same shuffle or I use the overhand shuffle here just to get a little variation in there I shuffle the king to the bottom of the deck I have the spectator stop me at any point I have the king of dimes going in there I in jog the card or I position with the overhand shuffle this card wherever I want to anyways here I want to have it on the top I in jog the first card I shuffle over it and now I undercut from the in jog but carry the bottom card away with my hands throwing it on top brings me into position of the king of diamonds on top and the king of spades at the bottom of the deck and I just can do this here just to show you this in performance speed how this looks like something like this bang bang it's a very nice uh, uh, bottom top control by the way looks like this I'll show you this once more time just like that Un until I lose them I lost them now <laughs> no I still got them very nice very nice so I got them now we give them one uh, or another false cut depending on how you perform and what you do just like that and here comes the um the leapfrog looks something like this that was too much leapfrog you cut into this position and then bang <laughs> jesus leapfrog let me show you this like this bang all the cuts fly away and the spectators cuts flew from the uh, away from the table that was too much energy too much energy too much energy right so king at the bottom king at the top you break from the bottom a third of cards here pivot the bottom card band it real good and then just have it jump out with the cards on top that that that's the leapfrog that's a card presentation it's a, it's a really really something that's how it's supposed to look like bang there comes the first king Woohoo! the cards are wild tonight first king it's a nice presentation after the shuffling thing so let's try to get this in performance speed so i have the cards lost in the in the manner which is an inter interactive uh, thing right and then i shuffle the cards if the one more card if the one more card and i say check this out let's see how wild the cards are tonight shall we take a look bang there we go we got an ace here very nice and we got the king of spades boom present present got the king of spades there there you go now uh, you can take all these cards place them at the bottom give this thing the same shuffle and you're in the same position you can just repeat the thing but what we're gonna do now so of course we want to find the other the other king right and the other king um therefore i need um i need a pen where do i have my pen uh it's my pen here whatever get my pens here please mark the the card you had selected which was it the king of diamonds no spectator goes i need to sign the card F and then with the pen and then he can find the king of diamonds and you say that is really weird <gasps> oh i feel something at my butt 
Oh, oh, look, look, look there, look, look there. There's a card. That can it be? It is your card. How did it jump to my butt? I don't know, right? Card goes there. Um, here in the trick to your to your uh, in under your sleeve and and the, you have a j jacket on and you 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 grab for the pan and that's your excuse going in with your hand so you would go in for your hand to grab the pan and put the card under your your arm you bring the pan out you give the pan to the spectator to find the card and 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 actually you bring out two pans right and while he finds the card you bring this pen back again and while you do this you really put the card i don't know really under your vest so that you have to, to open up the bottoms or something so that the idea here is to bury the card in an impossible location and you use this misdirection with the pants to be enabled to position the card in a situation where the spectator is um now just taking the pen and starts looking for their card Which here, in this situation, is the last um, last trick in this routine, which I um, don't think is a good choice, because uh, um, of course now you got a pen out, and the card kind of traveled to your body, and. The spectator has a pen and you have the card and actually this calls for more action doesn't it so at this point you would have the card i would have the card signed and maybe walk go to a um, ambitious card routine right let's see where i'm getting at so for me this is this is, this is a nice choice i locked i love this presentation the leap card, or maybe no, let's let's let, let's give give it a try. We're we're in this situation. We 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 um we are in this situation. We are performing this uh, leapfrog after the sh after after the shuffling routine. We perform the leapfrog. Look, the king comes here, right? I play it here. How do we do this? Take the king. And um, we will, how do I do this? And we will, um, right, play along with the whole thing. I'm trying to find the other king now, right? And the other king should be right here. Oh no, it is the king of spades again. Now we have to leave him out. Um, now I lost the other king. And I'm just around. So where am I? I'm in this situation. I got the two kings, I got one on top of the bottom. Now how do I? I don't want to bring them out immediately. I like to do this with the leapfrog. I'm just chasing around right now. Bringing this leapfrog thing. Bang. Like it very much. Get the king here. Take all the other cards. And I say... Let's see if we can find the... The king of diamonds with, um, with the king of... With the king of... Um, spades. Maybe. Or something like this. I try to do it like this. When he's in there, he makes... He spooks the other king. He makes the king of diamonds jump out. Bang! Oh no! It is the um, king of spades again. So where am I? So here needs should be the other king. The king of diamonds on top. Maybe. That's really, really weird. I got the king of diamonds on top. This guy just wants, keeps coming back. Uh, you know what? We just keep working with the guy. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the king of diamonds appears on top of the deck like, with a Mexican turnover. I don't know. Something like this. And I'm just now, I'm just now jazzing around. Where can I go from the, this situation? Just to keep this, this roll licking drive of this routine going a little faster. Because this is super fast. This is like bang, 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 bang. You, know, you might you might as well go like to really speed it up and then you you're at, oh no let's do something else now I, this is just annoying me with the kings and then you do the the piano the piano trick
By the way, I love this card production so much. It is just such a lovely card production. It's better, better than, um, better than uh, this crazy color change here, uh, which is also very, very crazy. So we just need. I, d I don't have it under control yet, but uh, but uh, but uh, but I love it very much. I love it very much. So, anyways, anyways. Loaded the two kings at the bottom right now. Now I'm, I'm, I'm jazzing around with these sleight of hand moves, you know. Because the thing is then, when you are routining things, tricks, and you have certain effects at a certain point, you might, you know, add a little bonus here or there, or give it your your own touch, and then you I find a nice way to load the kings at the bottom, which enables you maybe to go into a different direction. You know what I'm talking about? Now this is where, where the whole thing gets creative, where you, where you start really building something for yourself what you what you what you kind of you know what's your that that's your own thing and th this is something that you, you you will not you will never really forget if you once really got this down saying i've do it like this and do it like if you start working like this getting your routines down and if you give them a test then and, and and they're working you will be able to refine and refine them and this is how you get card magic really really down so to say at your fingertips so i've got some questions here i got light hunter asking for uh the, the um the falcon's clip joint it is completely look at this <laughs> Look at this deck of cards. It is completely ruined. But this is how it looks like. I'm 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 a savage when it comes to playing cards. And although it's super old. Look at it. Look at the borders here. So let me show you some cards here. They have in the in the in the pips they have these little designs in there. What does it say to this? Like two of hearts here. See that? And core cards. That's the ace of diamonds. Check it out. Oh, look at this. How dirty this is. That is so disgusting. <laughs> That's the ace. That's the ace of uh, clubs. Are you still with us, Light Hunter 32? And that is the Joker. Look at this. Lionel says, if you think it looks rough, you should see my first Black Scorpion deck. <laughs> it, I'm, 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 I'm always like totally um, uh, um, amazed of if you, if you have a worn out deck like this and you keep it a little bit in the box, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's still kind of workable. It's crazy. It is so crazy. All right. So crazy challengers is gonna head off since I need to eat dinner. Thanks for the stream and look forward to seeing your next stream next week. Keep up your great stuff and best of luck with the rest of the stream. See ya, crazy challengers. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your support on all levels. You are rocking awesome. Have a nice dinner and see you soon around uh, next time. Have a great week. Practice and practice well and it will come to you. So, let's go back to the card table. Here, yeah, I was thinking, this is a little too much for me. What, what, would, what, what would I add here? What would I add here? And I was thinking, you know, design for laughter is maybe something that is, uh, that, that's a nice thing you could bring in here. So, we are back in the same situation. Let's do this with these cards here. So, we had the King of Diamonds and the King of uh, Spades. Dubby dooby doo. 
King of Spades. And King of Diamonds. Like Spades on top, Diamond at the bottom. Let's see how they work. The cards, just like that. Nice little shuffle, throw over. Still got it under control. I think so, very nice. So, we do the leapfrog. We bring the card bang to the top. It's crazy. That is super crazy. But how do we find now the king of diamonds, right? So we give them cards one more shuffle, like a really, really, really good shuffle. We, we're looking now for the king of spades, right? One card. Now I ask the spectator, I ask the spectator to cut, a, to cut a, about a third. Sir, sir, um, miss, would you cut about a third here to the right here of the package? Just like that? Yes, like that. Do it like that. So, and then I have another spectator. Um, sh the card right here, the package right here. It's like, uh, but, but when they, when they do this, we're telling the story here now that um, there is this uh, psychological, psychological effect. Uh, it is um, uh, by um, uh, um, a very, very interesting psychologist called Darren Brown. Darren Brown, a very famous British psychologist, has discovered that confidence um, has a, um, a physical effect. So that when you when you actually are confident about what you are doing, you are more likely to succeed. Right, some something like this, and then so you now when you cut the cards in about one third, I want you to say speak out loud with the most confident emotion voice, with the most confident resonance. Uh, I can do it. I can cut to the king of spades. Say it now. Everybody says this with me now. I can cut to the king of spades. Like this is now. I'm going into this thing. I'm thinking how oh, I do this. This is how would I do this? I would have the whole crowd chant with me. I can cut to the king of spades. I can cut to the king of spades. And now why? And now we have to make a little music here. You guys in the background, you keep on chanting. She can cut to the king of spades. And I have a woman in front now in my imagination. You can. And when you cut, you have to say, I can do it. I can do it. You know. And then I have the whole crowd. King of spades. I can do it. And shit. You know. It's like do it. Something like this. It's a great idea. You know, you have <laughs> now you have the people in the bar. That is card magic. That's it. So, and they cut. So, you, anyways, you come into this situation. You say, you have to bring this. That's because it's important. You have to point this really out. So, you cut. Give it a little time. And you say, let's see. Let's see how you did. So, you turn around. Now, you can't do it the way I do it because you cannot know the card, which is in play, actually, because you make a mistake here. My bad. The idea is great. Let's keep it for something else. So we just go with the premise here of the trick. We just go with the, with the, with the um, story that uh, if you are confident enough, you can cut to the card, which is in play. As a, me as a magician, I don't know it. So I look at the first bottom here and I say, yep, that is not your card. I'm very sorry. That is not your card. Let's take a look at the second pile. It could be, it, but it's also not your card. Now let me take a look at this one here, and I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm really disappointed because none of these cards you cut to has been your card. So I got, uh, um, uh, no, I do it like this because I got, okay, I got, I got one, two, three cards you cut to, and none of these cards is your, your selection. So I have now to do the magic myself. So let me just just let me just listen to the cards. Look, I'm so retarded right now with with just uh, with just uh, uh, headphones on. You know? <laughs> what? A, I'm so, I'm 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 uh, I'm such I'm. My level of bullshit is intense, mate. Okay, and I know, I know now because even the universe is telling me, your card, whatever it is, is lying here at the seventh position from the bottom. That's how it works, you know. Right? Okay. So well, let's 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 go for it. Let's go for it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What was your card for the very first time? The King of Spades, you say. Very interesting. And now you're waiting. Somebody says, but the king of spades is lying there. And if they don't, you just go, look, 
there it is. <laughs> and and then somebody will pick it up and say, oh no, and now it's the Jack of Diamonds. Right? Designed for laughter. Now it's a great idea with the, with the group chanting, but the magician cannot know the card. Let's think about it again. Let's let's think about it again. We we are in this position. We shuffle the cards. We cut the cards. Right? We um we do our leapfrog. We do our leapfrog and we um present the first card. The King of Spades. Right? Now we shuffle the cards and we do design for laughter. Right? Design for laughter so that the spectators cut three piles and while they do this, they will say out loud, I can do this. I can cut to the king of diamonds. And then the magician no, not I can cut to the king of diamonds. I can cut to my card. I can cut to my card. So the magician goes and says, like, take a look. That is not your card. I know this immediately. Four of diamonds. That is very close, but it's also not your card. Check this out. And now this is uh, very disappointing because the king of diamonds is not your card also. So... What I have to do it now myself with the number. Anybody names a number? Somebody says number five, and you say, "Okay, five from the bottom. Uh, this is your, this is where we go." And then we go one, two, three, four, five. What was your card? The card was the King of Diamonds. Ba ba. Now, the mistake I did here right now is that there is this little misdirection which comes with comes in the whole thing. So once again, the cards cut. We show the bottom. We place it onto the table. We show the bottom. We place it onto the table. We show the bottom. We perform the glide. We stay in the glide position. We take another card and we say, from the bottom, we say, look, 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 it didn't work. Flash the bottom. But I know where it is now, because this card indicates that we are from the sixth, sixth from the bottom. So I take the six from the bottom. I say one. I perform the glide. I say two, three four five and this is the sixth card from the bottom what was the card the king of diamonds there you go very nice very nice very nice designed for laughter i just wanted to walk through this trick here also for myself because i was always i always wanted to to really get this into my repertoire and i never really did it and it's such a lovely trick and as you can see you can easily add this here right there hinter the rapid transition just i just want to show you this now you have to we we said we, we have to uh find the cards the only thing is you gotta you get you gotta start from the very beginning that you don't know the cards so you cannot work with the cards from the first trick from the rapid transition you have to have you have to them spectators spectators selecting new cards which the magician doesn't know and then you perform the leapfrog very fast you perform design for laughter you got two cards out you perform a piano trick maybe to get a little to get a pace under control and then you could start with a vested interest basically a new two or three trick phase since 
you're coming out with the pen. Okay, guys, what's going on in the chat here? So I'm always looking for a good card control because the Hermann pass is just a bit easy to uh, accidentally flash. Yep, you're right about that Light Hunter 32 card magic 99 runs. Light Hunter 32. Oh yeah, and what is the deck under your red bicycles? Okay, um, that is a Copac. And I think uh, the swing card could seem a bit obvious for if not done right. I really need to learn a new card control. Oh yeah, and I really dislike flap cards. They break way too easily. Okay, Narisman says, Light Hunter, I also um, chased for controls, just use the overhand shuffle or a double undercut. Even gi giants like Daryl use them often. Okay, thanks for the advice, Narisman. I will try that. Zao Sebastian Hansel is tuning in. Um, hi, everybody. Okay, let's talk a little bit about control here. Let's let's do this because, because this is such an important thing. Once again, guys, let me show you my my um, uh, uh, page site here. Here, this is the double lift um, tutorial series. Let's go back here. Um, card control, card control. Basic card control is the, the, the tutorial series. Light Hunter 32, you will find this tutorial series right there on the, uh, pretty much here. If you scroll down, if you go to my channel page, YouTube channel page, and you roll down, you will find card magic basic card control completed let me click on this one basic card control the serious pilot that give, which gives you an introduction then how to catch and hold a pinky break three practical ways of catching a pinky break a simple triple table card easy card control the double undercut a pretty card and the power of storytelling card magic which is basically a very 20 20 um, minutes video explaining how how you actually perform all this stuff let me walk you through this briefly here because you say you're looking for a new card control. There are many card controls. I mean, you said the Herman Pass. The Herman Pass is something I use all the time, um, but I always use it um, with the cards face up, which some don't like so much. The Herman Pass is a very powerful thing. In the right angle, standing like this, um, uh, I can control the to the bottom or the top. Jack of Hearts is the card that is chosen. I just turn the cards around, done. No, it's here. There it is, right? Um, it does. It, the people in, in the, I, the, the what I ex know from experience at this point, um, at this point, when you go here for the jack of um, jack of um, spades, you close the cards. In this situation, the spectators are completely satisfied. They look up, and they, you have plenty of time. And when you turn it around, um, uh, d d d d d they don't care. They don't see it. You don't have to worry about flashing. Learn to work with an offbeat. Learn to work with the um, attention of your audience. Um, for a table situation, of course, um, uh, the um, uh, what 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 am I? You got the king of because got the king of spades is um, uh, this uh, version really uh, really good where you pretend to square up the cards. I would, however, um, I would, however. Um, bring this motion of squaring the cards in there a little bit when I just sh display a little bit of card um, uh, um, uh, uh, table work, you know, something like this. I would square them up first. Then I would say here you choose any card. We got the two of um, two of hearts here. I would um, do it again like this. And then we got the two of hearts, maybe in uh how's this how, how do you work this with this this beautiful thing to throw the card out it's very nice anyways it, I, I don't care i don't it doesn't matter like this how do you do this when you do this how do you do this is it this one hey I, I don't know you can shoot a card out of this uh fan when you got it like this i don't know i don't know how you do it any guess so for for a table version you can do this of also of course standing this would uh this would look something like this so you would turn it around like this which oh no no how would you do it this way let me see so i would um um i would just turn it around like this. i don't know i wouldn't do it like this there of course there is the pass i like to do the dribble pass and once again here you have a lot of plenty of time to um 
um, to, to work here with the with the with the attention of your onlookers. All of this isn't meant for the cards being burned. Seven of clubs um, within this dribble brings the seven of clubs to the top of the deck. Let me show you. There it goes. Let me do this one more time. Let me do this with a card reversed. Like this. I'm going to do a little impression here. How to work that sucker. There it comes to the top. The pass. I, I like to use the dribble. Um, there are things like... Like the um, King of Clubs here. The um, Venus Trap. It's also a very old move. I think the... Um, uh, the the illusionist or some from the illusionist had made this uh, made this really famous or brought brought it up. Um, it's a really really old, um, very very beautiful and powerful technique, um, like this. Very nice. Um, there are of course techniques um, where where you simply I don't know uh, work w with doubles or steals to control. In this case here, the king of clubs plays it in there right, and the king comes to the top. A thousand ways of doing this. The, 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 like like Naira Smith just said, you can become you can go nuts over this. You can go start chasing one control after another. Of course, it's on the way. You will learn different controls, and it's really good to know them. But if you haven't really grasped the idea of how to use them, and if you have no experience of working with audience management, and if you don't understand the plotment and the narrative of tricks and the design of tricks, all these rather more advanced sleight of hand techniques will not do any good for you, right? Just that you notice. So let me just very briefly go through this um, to this um, tutorial series. What you can do with 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 some controls. So the simplest con st simplest control is we got the King of Clubs on uh, uh, on top of the deck here, catching a pinky break with the overhand shuffle. This would look something like this in a performance situation. Now I got a pinky break here over on top of the of the. Um, of the king of uh, clubs and now i can use what i call it a simple triple table card i cut to the king and i lost it that is crazy there so one more time just like that catching the pinky break cutting to the king and i lost it again no there it is one more time in jock catch the break Cut to the break and l l lose the king. Are you fucking kidding me right now? I've been performing this super difficult, like nothing, and now I'm, 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 I'm I can't show what I've been using all the time. Are you kidding me? You can, of course, use the classic fan or any kind of fan have the, even the spectator put the card in there close it catch a break again this time let's use the double undercut to get your king of clubs on top of the deck Nairismith says there's also I believe a um, jam session covering controls it's good just uh, going through them a little bit I also um, uh, have used the Chalier cut in this manner to catch a pinky break. And then this is the third cut. This is a pretty cut or fuck the double undercut to get your king of clubs to the top of the deck. Once again, in this tutorial series, you will find, you will find here at the end, the power of storytelling this one here 16 minutes and 22 seconds very very in detail explained the most important aspect of the performance situation of what of how you use this simplest of means you get an understanding of how card control works in general in the basic and that is your foundation on which you will build more sophisticated sleight of hand based card magic if you do it the other way around 
you will eventually um, despair on the way. Okay, now I've been talking a lot. I need a little break here. Put a little tea. So leave smiles, writes, I uh, use Injog and shuffle all the time in my card work. Of course, man, if you're working, you're doing this all the time. I think there's also live practice jam, Narrowsmith, covering controls. Lipol fan, Injog, right? Light Hunter, you're very welcome. It's so it's really the it's really something critical in card magic. It's and this is what um, I don't know how old you are. I don't know how long are you into card magic. Card magic is a really old um, art form, and of course it descends. It comes from actually cheating with cards. So a lot of um, techniques have been given only you know from uh, from masters of a professional gamblers which are, are, are of course con men professional con men um to their novices because you increase your incre you, you, you increase your chances uh, in any um con art if you're working together in teams in groups um and i don't know when cards really started being printed there must be a history of cards but i believe in on european uh, soil it dated back to um uh to th third mid mid uh, uh, 1300s first publication i believe 1570 or something i i don't name it down here um people always have been you know trying to um to gain the upper hand while playing um, games. Cheating is a part, cheating and lying is a part of human history, of course. Um, and all this history is in these cards. And for the last 200 years, cards ma card magic has uh, gradually evolving um, as a performing art. And of course has been changing its styles, defining its techniques. And we are here um, studying or learning a, a very subtle, a very down to earth, a very um, social and um, real magic um, with people very close to us, not emotionally, but really physically being there in the, in the room. And of course, the whole game changed and changed quite a lot since um, television came around. And then since, of course, it, uh, it became another uh, completely different drive since um, social media came around. And since everybody is basically equipped with a camera and um, uh, people are taking pictures and recording stuff basically on, uh, on a constant level, everything that's important to them, everything that that they uh, want to um, uh, memorize, that they want to keep, they, they start recording it. And um, they communicate, co communicate a lot with um, very simple um, uh, um, imagery, uh, much more with images than with uh, language than people used to communicate with language, you know? <laughs> because it was easier to be funny with a joke than with some with a, with a, with a, with a, with a gif or with a um, emoji or with a um, with a meme, you know? Because you would have to take a pencil and a paper and draw down your meme, <laughs> uh, which, by the way, people did occasionally but uh, in general uh, uh, yeah the, uh, the the importance and the value of language and the um mm, pretty much everything the timing the speed the pace um of communication really changed 
So I'm saying all this because now you get into magic and you are um, seeing all these epic trailers, all these magicians out there, all those people who say, look at my past, look at my past and look at my past. And 99.9999% um, of all these people are missing the most relevant thing. What is uh, what you need to really understand in order to actually perform magic. And that is attention of human beings. That is their their um, their uh, uh, cognitive um, representation of the world. What you are manip manipulating in a real life situation in a real interaction with people. And to put it very easy, um, there are no off beats with the camera. There are cuts. There are movements and motions and a lot of things but it's really different to actually performing with people for you as a cut guy that that means the following you you do not have to bring the slides down in a manner that um, a camera doesn't see anything that is what you need to do when you want to do camera magic or you want to be instagram magician or a youtube uh, famous guy or whatever but even there, you, you're competing with guys who are just faking the effect, which is much easier. <laughs> in magic, mm, than anywhere else. So why would I, you know, uh, get down a pass that is invisible when a camera is burning my hands? Because I don't need it. Nobody values it. But. Uh, people value the emotions of the audience so I need just need need to uh, people uh, to get go crazy on whatever I just did so basically I'm showing I'm, I'm just showing the back of the card and I'm showing Agabra and I just have some people going like ah and I have a much greater impact in the whole thing of the camera this is where where Jibreezy got busted and he got um got into this conflict with uh, with uh, Chris Ramsey which I thought was uh, ridiculous um, uh, because uh, uh, um, I totally got the, the point of Chris Ramsey <laughs> uh, but um, uh, but Chris Ramsey is missing on has been missing the point of, of, of the whole thing called magic and uh, and uh, and con man all the time because that is how we operate and how we work we make our life as easy as possible and at that point, Jibrizi was more a con man and more a magician to me than <laughs> uh, than anybody else in the situation. Because as when I look anything, I look w w with cameras. Uh, I know this is cameras. I know this is a different talk. I don't trust any. I don't trust any imagery uh, at all. <laughs> you know, I have to. I have got to be very, very selective about this. So, um, yeah. Anyways, you know. Of course, if you think about it as an art and you say like, um, you say, yeah, but isn't it the same when you when you have a camera holding down on your hands, like in this shot here, right? My only my hands wouldn't wouldn't it be the same thing that um, a, spe a spectator sees? Yes and no, because a spectator naturally is swapping between this and this, this and this, this and this, this and this. And he's not seeing the change which you are seeing now because the brain is taking it out so the spectator sees this all the time and in between if i wanted this and the transposition of the two faces are blocked out and this is where i do my shit in between here in between what you see right now but they don't it's not there in the brain it's not what we what we the brain does not represent the shift of the of attention and right there i lay my axe I go there, and that's a secret. So you don't have to go freaking crazy about the past. I show you, a, I show you a working past. This is a working past. This is all the past you will ever need. Seriously, this is all the past you will ever need. Done. Because I do that. This is what I do when this happens in the brain, or this, or if I'm really good. I position the pass. I start the pass here, and when this happens, I'm done. Right? And this is so much time. You can't believe how much time you have. It's crazy.
Like I said, I've been doing card magic for 10 months. All right. So you're just getting started, baby. <laughs> uh, Leafsmite says, you must understand what others think of you while you perform to really make your performance something well crafted. Um, yes, in a, in a way. And it's not only what others think of you. It, you, you, you need to understand, you need to understand the, 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 um, uh, the, the, the needs of uh, people as well as their um, their um, uh, weaknesses to, 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 to be to say it uh, the ugly way. So um, what you do is highly abusive if you if you want to be if you want to be put if you want to put it harshly. Uh, you um, play with their needs. You uh, uh, manipulate um, uh, their, you, you, their, 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 you, you, you shift their attention to where you want them to create certain needs, and then you um, um, uh, put their whole mindset. You disturb their whole mindset in a manner that they, as they follow along, loses more lose more and more track of what is really going on and at a certain point there are nothing but obedient slaves <laughs> and at this point if you realize this magic um or you and i don't know how many go, how many got there how many go there because there, you let me. I just, how do I say this? If you study magic, at a certain point there will be a door in your life that will be that that will be very tempting to open but also something inside of you will warn you about going through that door i can't put it in a better way i can't put it in a better way behind that door you will be confronted with um a revelation uh, understanding of how this world works and I'm I'm not talking about the um, physical universe or something or I'm not talking about the spiritual world or something I'm talking about the social world I'm talking about the psychology and the history and it will fucking creep you out <laughs> Let me show you um, the dark side of magic. Let me show you the darkest book I've got on magic. Um, uh, it has been written by one of the most evil motherfuckers ever walking the planet. Let me show you. There you go. It's propaganda by Edward Bernays. You wouldn't believe how the how the the course of mankind changed in the twenties because of this man.
And it is um, quite a challenge. And it comes with a lot of questions. It's like the, the powers, um, the power you can gain controlling um, the mindsets of other people, um, influencing what they believe um, up to a degree where you can calculate and control their behavior. Uh, uh, at what point is this, uh, get, get, does this get unethical? And um, how can you deal with this? Now, for a magician, for us as magicians, um, we we have a very clear line. Magic is an art form with the um, objective on, on entertaining the people. So we are manipulating the people to create illusions and these illusions cause um, amusement, um, excitement, emotions. They cause emotions, which is what we are basically selling as magicians, as, as performing artists, you know? Uh, we're showing some extraordinary skill. We're creating illusions that this, uh, this uh, gives the people emotions and that's what they're paying for. And the whole bargain is very clear and should be by now. Um, if you're going to a magician and you pay money, you, you, you pay ma money for this whole um, performance, uh, for a role play, for somebody who pretends to have magical powers, super, connect with the supernatural or whatever, creating illusions that give you the sensation of the mystical which is the desire we have, since we are very um, prim still very primitive creatures, <laughs> right? Um, but of course, you can, um, you, you can use all the same techniques to, um, to, uh, yeah, to manipulate people and, and um, up, up to, to, the, to a degree, to a scale, to, um, to control um, whole populations, right? And this is super exciting. So am I losing here, everybody? I'm just, um, I'm just, um, I've just got so far away from the card table. We are doing this here right now for one hour and 25 minutes. Yeah, that is a crazy book. Uh, Norm Chomsky writes, um, uh, a Bernie's honest and practical manual provides much insight into some of the most powerful and influential institutions of contemporary industrial state capitalist democracies. <laughs> Let me show you the read of most famous um, entrance of this book. This is where we're getting. But by the way, this is really, th this is um, from today's standards. This is like, um, this is, um, it was published 28, I believe, 1928. The Nazis dig the shit. The Nazis love that so much. 1928. It's very, from, from today's standards, it's very, the whole, this whole, the, the whole, um, the whole thing got much more defined. They are much, they, they got much better doing, using these techniques. Now this is the first sentence here. This is what most people would call conspiracy theory. Um, this is um, the core principle of Western industrial democracies. Listen to this shit. The conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democracy democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested largely by men we have never heard of. This is a logical result of the way in which our democracy, in which our democratic society is organized. Vast numbers of human beings must cooperate in this manner if they are to live together as a smoothly functioning society. That's how we're getting started here. Um,
This, of course, is targeting here uh, the masses. So a, a large amount of people. And what you need to understand through the whole thing is that uh, uh, that uh, that the how do you say this? There is a dimension build. The conception of man, the idea of man behind this is uh, very anti-humanistic. Um, it basically says that the masses are not able uh, of rational thinking and um, the rational um, individual, and, and, uh, which, is a f which is a free individual, uh, becomes uh, basically a slave of blind emotions within the masses. So now if you want to control masses, you need to address their emotions and their effects and completely dismiss their rationality. Um, uh, that is what Bernays defines as the core principle of organizing chaos um, in order to um, a, a, to get a general foundation for anything that is called a democracy. Um, <laughs> I have a very different concept of uh, democracy, by the way, and of how we should treat people and how, how we should understand our society. But that is that that is um, that is how, how we run, basically, basically. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a magic book. I um, I would say um, we we put aside for the moment. <laughs> uh, so 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 so. Let's go back here to the card table, shall we? So, no, I think I left, I, I, I leave it here. We have, um, we have been, we, we've looked at all the tricks here in the, in the, um, in this um, routine. Just one more thing about palming, maybe. I, I don't have anything up on palming. But just the same thing, like for um, for the for 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 the for the card control, it's true for palming. You're doing this in an offbeat, so at the moment where nobody is looking at the cards, really, you get your card palmed, and then you just can relax about the whole thing, right? And then with your card palmed, you you just you know give the cards to the spectator and you say just look for your card and while they're looking for your card you have enough time because that is super misdirection to place the card in the back in, in, in into your pants or whatever and then when they go through the card they will not find their selection and then you can you know show it whatever it was Yeah, of course, Canetti has also done a lot on mass psychology. Mass uh, psychology. What's it called? Um, Die Blendung. Mass und Macht. But there's another really good book, or a good book, like um, uh, Concern, Crafting Concern or something. Consent. Consent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 
I don't find I, I don't find it now. Mass mass psychology. I've I've got a I got some something here a little bit in my library. What I what I think what I thought what, what I um what I think is kind of you know troubling or interesting interesting in a way of kind of you know um you know there's just stuff that is kind of spooky. It's like that. There is so much similarity in addressing millions of people in order to manipulate their habits or their their cognitive response to whatever whatever your interest is. You want to shape their their um, ideas. In in what you do when you when you do this on a really small level, like for a group of people, small group of people, there is this. How do I say this? I never really s s said this. You have to you have to get an agreement with yourself that you're actually now doing this. You are leaving this. Um, you are leaving this um, sane or. You are leaving this. The, the, you are leaving this field, this play, this fair play field, where every where every player accepts um, you playing by the rules. And you you're just saying, I'm doing this now. I'm just going in there, and I'm just taking this space in order to dominate it, in order to control it in order to craft it and shift it in the manner I want it to be. I want them to see the world. I want them to experience the world. And this is what what sets the magic apart from any other art form that I know. I believe that is the, 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 the true and one difference from any other art forms I experience that because that is what you do. And you need to be conscious consciousness about it because you need to to um, to effectively use these tools we are we are learning here, practicing here, in order to achieve the best effects, right? And if you once realize this, there's kind of no turning back. And there's absolutely no doubt about it that there are people um, crafting. The mindsets of other people on a much larger scale. Like Bernice did. Man, well, we got to hear some weird techno in the background. Once again, we are listening to um, the Royalty Free Planet, which supports us YouTube content creators with the fine selection of royalty free artists on uh, 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 online mm. right now we we listen to bad talk time tamer synthy wave a little bit techno or something sebastian hansel is asking something out of topic for me as a former student of linguist uh, chomsky theory of transformative grammar is more relevant to me than this political work Well, I believe that makes sense. <laughs> I don't. I've, I've never really dig into Chomsky. Is his um, um? I know his political work. I know he's been very um, uh, influential, and he's been um, uh, he's been very political. Well, would he also um, come up with political theory or something? I don't know. I'm, I. I need to get you know what my list I have I haven't been um, I have my list of stuff I want to wrap my head around is so long basically I could stop working right now and like study for another 10 years every day eight hours and I wouldn't get my list down probably like so much stuff let me let me let me take a look at uh, Shamsky's um, Bibliography. Bi 
a German uh, a Wikipedia calls him one of the most famous left-wing intellectuals since the 1960s and one of the most prominent uh, critics of US politics and also one of the most famous linguists of present time What's, let's see what the English Wikipedia has to say about Chomsky because the English Wikipedia and German Wikipedia sometimes are very uh, 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 the difference between those two is very interesting so um, English Wikipedia says an American linguist, philosopher, cognitive scientist, historian, social critic and political activist, sometimes called the father of modern lin lin just linguistics. Chomsky is also a major figure in uh, analytic philosophy and one of the founders of the field of cogn cognitive science. He holds a joint appointment as institute professor emeritus at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, and uh, uh, Laureate professor at the University of Arizona and is the author of more than 100 books on topics such as linguistics, war, politics and mass media. Ideologically he aligns with anarcho syndicalism and libertarian socialism. <laughs> I like a shit. I wonder, what is anarcho syndicalism? <laughs> Anarcho syndicalism, also referred to as revolutionary syndicalism, is a theory of anarchism that view, views revolutionary in this industrial unionism or syndicalism as a method of for workers in capitalist society to gain control of an economy and thus control influence in broader society. Consider the economic theory as a strategy of facilitating worker self activity and as an alternative to cooperative economic system with democratic values and production centered on meeting human needs. Mm. Alrighty, right. Alrighty, right. <laughs> yeah, well, Bernice is on the opposite side of this, you know. One of the main, one of the main, and early targets and objectives of propag pro propaganda was to get the, the working class back under control and of course it was done by implementing in their minds over generations that uh, capitalism is the only form of, demo uh, of, a, dem of a democratic society with no alternative. It's the best option for democratic society and the success of um, private um, entities, uh, uh, private uh, possession and companies, the success of companies equals to the success of the individual as a cons consumer. So the individual becomes um, identified as a consumer who, whose um, freedom flourishes over the um, uh, over the growth of uh, um, economy in the capitalist society, which is organized as a democracy. Yeah, of course, and that is what that is what they uh, that this uh, this has been uh, uh, put in the heads of Western civilization since um, since the twenties of the since since the, starting with, with with World War One probably. Uh, the opposite growth mass movements. This is a mass movement. The, the, uh, growing, the, the uh, opposite um, um, mass movements, of course, was national so socialism with, uh, with race, race theory and um, uh, social Darwinism. So basically breeding the super race and executing in a, f in a fight over dominance of, of world power, executing every other and weaker race. That's what the Nazis <laughs> tried to do. Which is really, really, really fucking scary. <laughs> and the other mass movement, of course, was a, a, a commu communism. And in the story of of how this tech technology propaganda is a technology of um, yeah um, governing and of 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 um, ruling of uh, um, how do you say? Let me say. 
piloting, piloting huge societies, let's say it like this, a little neutral. Um, was then identified as something uh, negative and because everybody was using it and then um, only the propaganda, only the, um, the bad guys would do, the communists and the Nazis. <laughs> Uh, of course, after the Nazis were defeated, only commun communists did it. Propaganda, that the evil thing, Manip manipulating uh, the masses, um, and um, in in the in the capitalist society, namely the the uh, U.S. empire, it it turned into public relations, and it was Edward Bernays himself who would. Um, I realized very early that it was needed to um, to rebrand this technology in the Western world. It's really impressive, at least to say. Um, one of the greatest scoops, one of the greatest magic tricks in mankind. Most of the people have never heard about the guy. In the first liberation movement of women, I don't even know when it was, in the 40s or the 60s. I, I believe he was working for Lucky Strike. <laughs> he would, um, he would have, um, he would engage women on a march and he would um, have them smoke cigarettes, pay them to do that. It was a taboo by the time. Only men were allowed to public publicly smoke. <laughs> and then he would have uh, a lot of reporters. He also hired them to make photos and to tell the story, the news story. Now women are smoking. And they called them cigarettes. When I heard it, I had to like torches of freedom <laughs> don't get the women with their torches of freedom can you believe what that what that has made a change in cigarette sales when all of a sudden all the women in the country started smoking which I didn't do before because it was a taboo and you think about it that's fucked up on a level beyond comprehension <laughs> yeah study and magic comes with some side effects So there's uh, still 10 folks with me, although we left the field of card magic a lot here. We had these three beautiful tricks. I will do a little bit of a practice routine with this old deck here, Fulton Clip Joints. Let me see if I can work this a little bit. And then we, um, we get ready for our next session next Tuesday where we're going to look at a, another fine routine consisting out of, let me check this out, out a bunch of tricks. Um, it is going to be a card discovery routine. We're gonna have to gonna take a look at the tipsy trick, the double speller. Uh, Pinky does it, and I've got a tutorial on a very uh, on a, a much more workable one-handed variation on the rising card, uh, and a smash finish. Um, maybe I will add another trick to it. We once again will look at tricks up close, and but also um, try to um, analyze. Um, how to actually piece them together to make one little tiny act of them. A, what what Ahugat and Brui call a routine. Um, I'm always confused about this because in a way, 
a card trick itself is a routine, isn't it? <laughs> and that's what we're going to do next week. And then there's going to be the Razel Dazel routine. And then we um, we are we are in the last chapter of the book, man. And we're going to take a look at some other fine tricks at platform tricks. So we play it wider then. That's what's coming up here on Admiral's Magic, and that's uh, then um, that's how we how we end this year. Um, maybe I will do a little um, a little closer video. Especially addressing the odd maniacs, guys who support me on Patreon. By the way, I haven't I haven't thanked you today. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for your support for your pledge on Patreon. It really means a lot to me. Every every penny counts, you know. And also this routine here, uh, this um, this connection that's happening here, the interaction with you guys, that's amazing, you know. You are awesome. Thank you so much for your support. And after all, it's pretty dope. It's really crazy that I'm still here. 2019 started with this Article 11 and Article 13, this 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 copyright um, reformation on the U European Union, which is still a threat, which still might you know cut us loose from the whole thing. And then uh, I don't know how many how many crazy things on YouTube went down. But here we are, we're still here. We're still doing it. We're still pr practicing cards together. Thank you so much, guys. here. I'm going to turn my pullover out. Having used here my power of vape at, at all. Oh man, this tastes so radical. We are in for one hour and 47 minutes, slowly breathing in, breathing out, bringing it to an end. A little bit of um, practicing here. After all, from what, from all what I've seen so far, you have to be very careful when you're confronted with information or with out with input. When you're confronted with input that triggers emotion, right? On social media and um, on the news and stuff. It, it, it is usually when it is crafted to trigger your emotions, it is usually with the intent to manipulate you in one or another way. Whenever a discourse or a discussion leaves the basis of solid, fact-based, evidence-based, rational argument 
you're entering the game play the arena of mindfuck games and it's a very very dangerous arena And if you want to check out where are you standing, you need to go to the places in your mind, in your opinion, that are rock solid, where you convinced that this is how it is. And, and then you have to loosen that shit up. And you have to question, how did you come to those strong beliefs? And how do they serve you in the end? What is the true end result of these beliefs? And eventually you will figure out then what you're believing is serving less your interest than the interests of someone else, whoever it might be. And then eventually you realize that you are in an abusive relationship, and I'm not talking about a uh, one-on-one relationship. Let's talk more about a system or a social contract. I've seen this so much on social media where people fighting with each other, against each other. Although they are when you take them from when you take it when you take it from a broader view, from a different perspective, you realize they are actually fighting fighting against themselves or each other is against their own interest. But very much in the interest of of a third party who not seldomly turns out to hugely profit from those groups fighting against each other which if they would stand together in solidarity for their interests would maybe change the world for the vast majority to a better place. So always be cool, always stay calm. And guys, I'm not the I'm the guy. I'm not. I'm I'm I'm, I'm saying this. I'm preaching to myself here, because I lose my shit on a regular basis. Memento Magico uh, from Leodini says, thanks for your time, dude. Thanks, everyone, in this live today. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in, mate. Okay, I can't believe that this old deck is still rolling so well it's crazy so crazy
Practicing cards. Practicing cards. So... So just a little bit of music here in the background and I'm just practicing the cards. You guys are probably also practicing your thing or working on your airplane or <laughs> whatever you're doing. This is weird now, this feels like really, really early, although we are already two hours in. What I don't, what I don't get here, I don't see what happened here. Now get a deck of cards, it's now why, why isn't there here, here's uh, your, um, your chat is gone. I don't see all the things you're chatting here. I don't understand this. Where's all your chat? Why is this not here? No, what the fuck? What is happening here? All right, chat uh, died off or something. That's weird. I don't know. So that's why I didn't see so many things you said. Guys, I had a blast of a time. I can see, I can see what you write on my chat bar, but I, I don't see, uh, it doesn't work here anymore on, on uh, On the, on the thing, and I, I don't know why. I don't know why. Let me try this here. That's so weird. It's so weird. So now this is giving giving me this thing. But you see this little blue dot, and it, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't scroll to the end, and I don't know why. I don't know why. Let me type something in. Let me see if this, if this makes something happen. No, it doesn't show. Okay, doesn't matter. Guys! So you can't, you can, you you need to, um, you need to look at the chat now at the side of this video, or downstairs to say goodbye to each other. I had a blast of a time. We are now in for two hours, like a really, um, really relaxed session. We looked at these great tricks, talked a little bit about um, Erdnase and uh, capitalist propaganda. You know.
You know, is capitalism really, really the uh, without alternative? Can a little bit fairer and social society with the with the, with the government take a little bit more responsibility for the people and and regulating a little bit the market so that we don't have a situation where people are insanely rich and and so many people have to um, suffer poverty, although it's not their fault, right? <laughs> Is it really everybody? Is it really all of the people's fault who are homeless there out on the streets? <laughs> are they really just lazy fucks? And and has and has Jeff Bezos really worked that hard to to, to become the richest man on the planet? <laughs> or is uh, is there maybe a co correlation between so many people being so poor and so few people being so rich? You know, yeah, think about it. <laughs> Be open-minded. <laughs> I don't know guys so you missed me being very funny uh, when did you when have you been very funny man I, I, I missed you being very funny when where uh. hey you shine the clown I haven't been funny today so much a little bit serious right but uh, but we but I love these uh, tricks and I love this uh, love this very much this um this uh, uh, the thing with the top change here, the situation like um, taking it, waving the cards coming, place pointing. I think this is something worth like a little bit practicing. So get the, f the, the wrist coming, coming, coming here. It would be in this situation like this. Can you work this? Can I make this work? Just like coming back. Need to bring my whole body back. Not so slow. Wow. Have it already pushed forwards. Or like this. Let me see. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, guys. I'm 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 I'm, gu I'm guessing I'm guessing we're we're good for today. I'm, I'm is, that, is anybody still with me? Are you still guys still with me? Um, uh, analytics tell me that we I currently got nine uh, 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 nine folks watching. Yeah, I'm I'm closing here too. Hey you sh uh, hey you the clown. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. You're rocking awesome. Take care, and see you around next time. Okay, it seems like you guys are not getting through for some reason. I don't know. So, thank you so much for tuning in. I had a blast of a time. You know the drill? You practice and you practice well and it will come to you. And we keep on working here on this channel on becoming the best magicians we can become in order to perform entertaining, stunning cat magic. Ain't that right? See you guys next week. Until then, rest assured, more magical stuff is going to be uploaded very soon. And Sebastian Hensel, I have to leave now as well, but I will watch the rest of the stream later. Call you next time. I'm signing out for tonight. It was a blast. Guys, take care. Until next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Berlin time GMT plus one and ciao on Mario's magic like and subscribe